The 8,999th meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The provisional agenda for this meeting is threats to international peace and security. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 39 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite Mrs. Izumi Nakamitsu, High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of Item 2 of the Agenda. I now give the floor to Mrs. Izumi Nakamitsu. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council. I am aware that the Russian Federation has submitted documents regarding allegations of biological weapons programs in Ukraine. As I informed the Security Council last Friday, the United Nations is not aware of any such biological weapons program. I would also like to note that the United Nations currently has neither the mandate nor the technical or operational capacity to investigate this invest in information. As I previously informed the Council, the relevant instrument of international law is the 1972 Biological Weapons Convention, or BWC, which effectively prohibits the development, production, acquisition, transfer, stockpiling, and use of biological and toxin weapons. The Russian Federation and Ukraine are both states' parties to the Biological Weapons Convention. Mr. President, the Biological we Weapons Convention contains several measures to which concerned state parties can have recourse in order to address situations in which they have concerns or suspicions about the activities of their peers. Pursuant Article 5 of the Convention, its states' parties undertake to consult one another and to cooperate in solving any problems. Such a consultation and cooperation can take place on a bilateral basis between the concerned state parties, or it can be undertaken through appropriate international procedures. One such international procedure that has been elaborated within the framework of the Biological Weapons Convention is the convening of a consultative meeting. Other possibilities for addressing concerns between states parties also exist under Article 5 of the Convention as well as under Article 6. As I mentioned last week, the BWC needs to be operationalized and institutionalized to ensure it is properly equipped and resourced to face future challenges. The Convention's upcoming ninth review conference presents the ideal opportunity for its states parties to comprehensively strengthen the Convention. The United Nations Office for Disarmament Affairs stands ready to support any procedures under the Biological Weapons Convention that states parties may decide to use. Mr. President, turning to the issue of the safety and security of Ukraine's nuclear power facilities. The Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency has reported that, according to the Ukrainian authorities, all safety systems at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant remained fully functional as of yesterday, following the site's loss of connection to a third external power line linking to the national electricity grid. Although officials from Russia's state nuclear power company were present at the facilities in southern Ukraine, Ukrainian staff continue to operate the plant. The Chernobyl power plant remains connected to the national electricity grid following reconnection on 4th of March. However, Ukrainian operators and guards have not been able to rotate for three weeks now. The IAEA has reported that 
According to the Ukrainian authorities, eight of the country's 15 reactors remained operating. I understand that regarding nuclear safeguards, the IAEA is still not receiving remote data transmission from its monitoring systems installed at Chernobyl, but such data was being transferred to IAEA headquarters from the other nuclear power plants in Ukraine. I take this opportunity to reiterate the Secretary General's support for efforts by the IAEA to establish a framework on the safety and security of Ukraine's nuclear facilities and urge all parties to work towards this end. Mr. President, I wish to also highlight the terrible toll this conflict is having on civilians. The civilian casualties continue to rise. As of 16 March, the Office for the High Commissioner for Human Rights had recorded 2,032 civilian casualties, including 780, killed of whom 58 were children. The actual number of casualties is believed to be much higher. Most of these casualties are caused by the use of explosive weapons with a wide area impact. These include attacks using heavy artillery, multiple launch rocket systems, ballistic and cruise missiles, and airstrikes. I also want to reiterate that attacks directed at civilians are prohibited by international humanitarian law. We must find a diplomatic solution to this war to put an end to the violence. As Secretary General Guterres said, and I quote, we need an immediate cessation of hostilities and serious negotiations based on the principles of the UN Charter and international law. We need peace, peace for the people of Ukraine, peace for the world. We need peace now. I thank you very much for your attention. I thank Ms. Nakamitsu for her presentation. I now give the floor to members of the council who wish to speak. I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. <coughs> President, first of all, allow me to express our condolences to the post, uh, the representative of Ireland, following the uh, the loss that they suffered. This is obviously a loss to the Irish mission and for all of us. So uh, please accept our condolences, ma'am. President, colleagues, we've always already said that during Russia's special military operation in Ukraine, information was discovered regarding the implementation of the Ukrainian authorities with the support and the direct supervision of the US Ministry of Defense of dangerous projects as part of their military and biological program. This activity was carried out on the territory of Ukraine, the center of Eastern Europe, and in the western borders of Russia, which created a real threat for the biosecurity of our country and the whole region. A week ago, on the request of the Russian Federation, there was the first Security Council meeting held on this topic. Here we asked our Western colleagues a series of questions, but they haven't yet responded to them. The representative of the US wasn't able to explain how the statements of the American officials about how there is allegedly no US-controlled biolaboratories on Ukraine, how that tallies with the fact or the present of documentary proof of this kind of cooperation between Kiev and Washington. I'd recall here we're talking about a agreement signed in 2005 between the US Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of Health of Ukraine, which clearly sets forth support for the Pentagon to joint biological research applicable to dangerous pathogens located in facilities on Ukrainian territory. Although the American delegation can't and does not want to respond to our questions, but they are, as, as much as the Russian Defense Ministry uh, is aware, is studying what... Uh, materials we received from Ukraine by laboratories about the implementation of military biological programs by the US and their NATO allies on Ukrainian territory. Over the last week, new details have come to light which allow us to state that the components for biological weapons were being created on the territory of Ukraine. 
the implementation of the aforementioned American-Ukrainian agreement in, from 2005, and comments on which we're still waiting for from the US representation, has been going full steam ahead for all these years. However, from the document we can see that the American colleagues were not helping, as they claim, the Ukrainian Ministry of Health, but rather the Ukrainian Ministry of Defence. The Doc Security Council document that we distributed this morning, and uh, you see in that material, you can see the so-called te technical assistance plan for certain recipients of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defence. I recommend you to look at this document very carefully. It confirms direct funding and supervision of the Pentagon and its Defence Threat Reduction Agency of military and biological projects in Ukraine. The overall quantity of the funding was $32 million and the, direct, and the money went directly to the following laboratories in the, from the Ministry of Defence of Ukraine. In Kiev, the 10th Regional Health Epidemiological Department of the Central Health Epidemiological Department of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defence. In Odessa, the 27th Regional uh, Health Epidemiological Department of the Central Epidemiological Department of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defence. In Lvov, the 28th Regional Health Epidem Epidemiological Department of the Central Epidemiological Department of the Ukrainian Ministry of Defence. In Kharkov, the 108th Regional uh, Department of the uh, Ukrainian Ministry of Defence Epidemiological Department. I'd like to draw your attention to one another vitally important point. The representative of the US State Department's continue to muddle the information and, uh, and assert, ascertain that US uh, allegedly don't, are not, does not operate in any biological laboratories in the territory of Ukraine, but the facts show otherwise. According to the plan that I mentioned for technical assistance, the donor is the US Ministry of Defence. They establish the, tax, the tasks and the workload with, as part of the projects on Ukrainian territory. And they set forth a list of the necessary equipment and a delegated significant authority to an affiliated contractor company, Black and Veatch, with cooperation uh, with Ukrainian uh, bodies of uh, authority. The recipient of American assistance was the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, and they were allowed timely access for Pentagon and contractor staff to laboratories on Ukrainian territory in order to carry out work as part of these projects, and also to provide access to these facilities alongside Pentagon staff, foreign scientists too. The projects themselves included implementing, was, was implemented not by the Ukrainian scientists, scientists, but with their participation. Put simply, the Ukrainian authorities gave the Pentagon carte blanche on the territory of Ukraine to carry out uh, dangerous biological experiments there. The American contractors at the same time was free, got a tax break under Ukrainian legislation. So what did the Ukrainian scientists receive in return, i.e. the Ukrainian people? Free travel to international conferences based on expenses for food and accommodation as established by uh, for US civil servants. Uh, this kind of compensation is carried out, is, is, is that's the compensation provided for working alongside dangerous biological science. This is not the uh, noble assistance to Ukraine that the American representatives talk about. This is a cynical use of its territory and population for dangerous research, which Washington does not to carry out on its own territory. So it doesn't run a risk of hurting its own people. We're not when we surprised if similar facts about activities supervised by the US in, appear in laboratories in other regions of the world too. We call on countries who provide their territory for carrying out this kind of experiments to the Pentagon to carefully study the contracts for their cooperation with the US on, in the biological domain. We fully support require the question from China to the US to share the data of the activity of the 360 laboratories under American control around the world. Going back to Ukraine, these uh, biolaboratories in Kiev, Odessa, Lvov and Kharkov were selected by the uh, US uh, def defend, uh, Risk Reduction Agency, not by chance. They were the those who implemented the UP8 project focused on studying path and pathogens of Congo Crimea fever, leptospirosis and hantiviruses. 
We believe that the interest of the military biologists of the US is specifically in those pathogens is linked to the fact that they have they are naturally present both in Ukraine and in Russia, and so that their use could then be dressed up as a natural outbreak of these diseases. On the basis of in the laboratory in Kharkov, there's also the P781 project to study transmission to humans of uh, diseases through bats. Work on this was done alongside the infamous uh, Lugara Center in Tbilisi. In this context, separate attention should be paid to the Pentagon's choice of carrying out work, uh, the contractors chosen to carry out work in Ukraine, the Black and Veatch Company. This is not just any old company. For more than 100 years, it's been working for the American Army. It has built for the Army military bases, including a laboratory in Los Alamos, uh, to develop nuclear weapons. Um, transmit, uh, research into human transmission of diseases through bats in Ukrainian bio, bio laboratories was systemic and was ha has been happening as a minimum since 2009 with the direct oversight of specialists from the USA. During the implementation of these projects, six families of viruses were identified, including coronaviruses and three types of pathogenic bacteria, uh, the pathogens from the plague, brucellosis and leptospirosis. These are the most attractive option to use in order for infection because they are resistant to medicine and they spread very quickly from uh, animals to people. As part of the Flu Fly Away project, the Kharkov Institute of Veterinary Medicine studied wild birds as a vector to transmit avian flu. At the same time, they assessed the ways in which the transmission process could become uncontrollable, ca cause economic damage and create a risk to food security. Documents show the involvement of the Kharkov Institute in the work to collect strains of avian flu viruses which are have high epidemiological potential and could cross the species barrier. The Russian Ministry of Defence also has more and more new documents about the transfer of samples of blood serum from Ukrainian citizens to the territory of third countries, including to the UK, Georgia and Germany. The analysis of the information gives us grounds to say that the Ukrainian specialists were not informed about the potential risks of the transfer of biological materials and are used and are kept in the dark and don't have a real idea about the real objectives of the research being carried out. And this is not surprising if, according to the doc contract documentation that I mentioned earlier, they were simply playing a secondary role. We also have new uh, data about attempts to destroy bio biological materials and documentation in Ukrainian laboratories in order to quickly wipe the traces of the implementation of military and biological programs. We know that during the uh, activities to destroy this, uh, the veter vet veterinary medicine laboratory in Helebodarsk town, the uh, citizens of Ukraine, the staff working there, weren't even allowed into the building. This laboratory cooperates with the Melchnikov Scientific Research Institute in Odessa, where research is carried out in to pathogens of the plague, anthrax, cholera and tularemia. In their attempts to wipe the traces of biological waste from the laboratories in Hlebodarsk, uh, these waste was taken 120 kilometres towards the western border towards Tarutina and Berezino. The Russian Ministry of Defence has recorded all of this these information to carry out a legal assessment further down the line. The emergen uh, emergency uh, urgent destruction of documents in the Herson uh, Biolaboratory, uh, we believe that the reason for this rush was their wish to hide from Russian specialists information about an outbreak in 2019 in Herson of derofilariasis, as a disease which is spread by mosquitoes. The four cases of infection of this disease were identified in February, which is not usual for the life cycle of these insects, even to bearing in mind the incubation period for the disease. At the same time, we are aware that in April 2019, the representative of the Pentagon visited the local institution, uh, health institutions where they learnt of the results of the epidemiological research and they were able to copy the medical documentation. I'm ready to snap up any fakes 
which are provided by the Ukrainian authorities with the support of their Western backers. The Western media are expressing doubts as regards the reliability of the material that the Russian Ministry of Defence has published. I'd like to draw your uh, attention to the following. The documents that we found have a signature, a real signature of officials from the US. Particularly, many of them are signed by the head of the Ukrainian office of the Threat Reduction Agency, Joanna Wintrell. This is a Pentagon staff member and well known in well known in non proliferation circles. Before Ukraine, she supervised the destruction of chemical weapons in Libya. If journalists really are interested in the verifying the documents that we provided, then I propose that you ask her directly. Is that really her signature? I'd like to underscore once again that here we're talking not simply about the US and Ukraine's violation of the Biological Weapons Convention. We're actually talking about that there is more and more proof that at the centre of Eastern Europe, until the very last minute, there was a dangerous military biological activity being carried out, the consequences of which at any time could spread beyond the country and even into the region. The scale of casualties, including um, amongst the population of Ukraine, Ukrainian, of, of European countries in this case, in this scenario, is hard to imagine. Coronavirus is, could be nothing compared with this. Uh, we're also concerned by that there's a threat that uh, already exists. For example, in 2018, those living in Lugansk and Donetsk, uh, there was a sharp spike in cases of tuberculosis caused by a new multi-resistant strain. During this mass outbreak recorded in the region, in, uh, near Pesk, more than 70 cases of infection were recorded, which were quickly became lethal. This doesn't look like coincidence. In conclusion, I'd like to comment on the statement made by the representative of the UN Secretariat, that the Secretariat does not have information about the implementation of military and biological programmes on the territory of Ukraine. In line with this BWC, states parties prov provide the UN information about facilities and biological activities carried out. We're talking about confidence building measures which are published in order to monitor implementation of the convention. Since 2006, which was when this, these projects started, including the projects UP4, UP8 and P781, the US and Ukraine has been deliberately keeping quiet about this in their reports, despite the clear military and biological purposes of this. This is why Russia for many years has been calling for a strengthening of the BWC regime and to adopt a legally binding protocol to the convention, which should allow us to create an effective mechanism of verification and include in reporting from states parties inform information on military biological activities carried out abroad. For 20 years, the US has been blocking this kind of work, refusing to provide this kind of information. Indeed, one other question, um, which the representatives of the US have time and time again been not providing us with, all of the facts I listed today on the 11th of March are only the tip of the iceberg. Our, tip, our Ministry of Defence is receiving more and more material and we're an analysing them. We will continue to keep the international community informed about the unlawful activity carried out by the Pentagon on Ukrainian territory. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of Russia for his statement and give the floor to Albania. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me express our shock on the sudden passing away of a colleague of ours, Ambassador Jim Kelly, DPR of Ireland, and a seasoned diplomat. We convey to our Irish colleagues and to Jim's family our most heartfelt condolences on this terrible loss. Mr. President, we thank USG Nakamitsu for providing us the same information as last Friday on this matter. We heard nothing new from the UN Department of Disarmament Affairs of the United Nations because there is nothing new. We take issues of weapons of mass destruction very, very seriously. But still, there needs to be an issue. Mr. President, we heard last Friday, and it was repeated here, the United Nations is not aware of any alleged program in Ukraine inconsistent with international treaty obligations including on chemical or biological weapons. So what are we doing this morning? What are we talking about here? For non-existent chemical weapons programs in Ukraine, developed in non-existent laboratories and financed by non-existent programs? Russian claims, and we listen to the statement, remain unverified 
unsubstantiated, uncorroborated, and not independently verified. In a word, not credible. It is hard not to think then and believe that today's meeting comes as a last minute replacement out of an, an easy pickup drawer is therefore a loss of time and abuse of the council. We are afraid to find ourselves in the best case scenario with an attempt by Russia to try to shift attention from its crimes and the stalling invasion to sh by sowing fear with the dreadful prospects of chemical warfare or at the worst, Given Russia's track record of accusing others of the very crimes that they have been perpetrating, including in attempted assassinations and poisoning of its own citizens, Russia intends to use disinformation tactics as a pretext for further escalation and possible use of chemical or biological weapons in Ukraine. We have seen more than once that the, we have seen that the more the invasion stalls, the deadlier the missile attacks and bombardments become. This is the real issue and the serious one. Let's remind ourselves, colleagues, that Russia has been saying one thing and doing its opposite, that Russia is blatantly breaking international law and what, whenever they speak about Ukraine, they are just distorting reality. Claims need to be properly and fully investigated and we know how this is and can be done. Russia should first agree to an immediate ceasefire throughout the territory of Ukraine. It should withdraw all military forces within a radius of 40 kilometers of suspected locations, ask that the UN security forces secure 40 kilometers of radius to allow diagnostic research teams to conduct proper investigations. Instead, we have the impression that Russia speaks to itself. Dear colleagues, with the sole exception of Russia, everyone around this table, everyone without exception, as well as 140, 140 members of the UNGA, have been clear on the absolute necessity to respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, to stop the war, to protect civilians, and to deal with issues and concerns, not by bombarding indiscriminately, not by killing innocent people, not by destroying a country, not by wrecking economic havoc to the entire world, but through negotiations and through diplomatic channels and mechanisms. This is what needs to be done. This is what Russia should be doing, not abusing the councils with pop-up subjects of convenience, trying to create the illusion of truth out of repeated lies. In Beaumarchais's words, calumnier, cal Slander, slander, something will always stick. The world looks to the Security Council, and for good reason, for hope and solutions as the body responsible for peace and security. It should not be abused for propaganda and irrationality. And I thank you. I thank the representative of Albania for his statement and give the floor to the representative of the USA. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, High Representative Nakamisu, for joining us today to repeat what you gave us, ex the, exactly what you gave us last week. And last week, we heard from the Russian representative a tirade, a bizarre conspiracy theories. This week, we're hearing a whole lot more where that came from, things that sound like they were forwarded to him on a chain email from some dark corner of the internet. President Biden has a word for this kind of talk, malarkey. As I said one week ago, Ukraine does not have a biological weapons program. There are no Ukrainian biological weapons laboratories, not near Russia's border, not anywhere. There are only public health facilities, proudly, and I say proudly, supported and recognized by the U.S. government, the World Health Organization, and other governments and in, uh, international institutions. In fact, it is Russia that has long maintained a biological weapons program in violation of international law. It is Russia that has a well-documented history of using chemical weapons. It is Russia who is the aggressor here. It was Russian operatives who poisoned Alexei Navalny 
and Sergei and Yulia Skripal with nerve agents. It is Russia that continues to support the Assad regime in Syria and shield it from accountability when the UN and the OPCW have confirmed that Assad has recently used chemical weapons over the past several years. Let's not forget why, why we are really here today. We're here because Russia knew its cynical ploy to pass an exculpatory resolution had failed. This meeting is the result of their isolation on this council and on the world stage. We're not buying what they're selling, literally or figuratively. And I will reiterate the United States' deep and serious concern that Russia's calling for this meeting is, is a potential false flag effort in action. Russia has repeatedly, repeatedly accused other countries of the very violations it plans to perpetrate. We continue to believe it is possible that Russia may be planning to use chemical or biological agents against the Ukrainian people. We aren't going to dignify Russia's disinformation or conspiracy theories, but we will continue to sound the alarm and tell the world where we think Russia is heading. And we will remind the world that Russia has repeatedly, repeatedly lied to this council over recent weeks. Despite all the evidence we could see with our own eyes, it told us that it was not going to invade Ukraine, that it was engaged in war games, that it was interested in diplomacy. I asked the Russian PR, where are the 100,000 troops who were sitting on the Russian side of the border now? Sadly, I think many of them have given their lives in this senseless, unconscionable war against the Ukrainian people. Russia lied to its own people as well, shutting down media to try and hide the truth. And I will not repeat the slurs and false accusations that Russia has hurled against the Ukrainian people and the United States repeatedly at this table. But we know that Russia's dis disinformation is a sign of its desperation. That's the truth. And we will continue to ensure the world sees it and hears it. Thank you, Mr. President. That's good one. I thank the representative of the United States for her statement and give the floor to the representative of Ireland. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I wanted to say at the beginning, Mr. President, how much the Irish delegation appreciates the messages of condolences we've received on the sudden loss of an outstanding Irish diplomat, colleague and friend, Gurjesh De Gorava Anam, may he rest in peace. Mr. President, I would like to thank High Representative Nakamitsu for her briefing. Ireland deeply regrets the decision of the Russian Federation to call for today's meeting. It has done so yet again for no other reason than to promote its spurious claims against Ukraine and others. It is deeply troubling to hear the Russian Federation spreading unsubstantiated, unfounded allegations. The only so-called proof provided is to point to a transparent projects necessary for biosecurity, for human or animal health. Research of the kind carried out by many countries to advance global health, benefiting mankind. President, I urge the Russian Federation to cease its campaigns of disinformation and attempts to distract from what is really happening because of its war in Ukraine. This behavior is deeply, this behavior is disturbingly consistent with the Russian Federation's own track record of using disinformation in multiple multilateral fora to dissemble and deny its activities. Russian military forces in Ukraine have already demonstrated 
reckless disregard for nuclear safety and security since the start of their invasion. This pattern of recklessness raises real fears of a significant radiological, chemical or biological accident. It is unacceptable to make unfounded accusations against Ukraine, a state party in good standing to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, the Chemical Weapons Convention and the Biological Weapons Convention. President, the use of chemical or biological weapons in Ukraine would inflict untold additional suffering on the Ukrainian people who have already suffered so much from the actions of the Russian Federation. Use of these heinous weapons is immoral and illegal in any circumstance. There will be no impunity for those who use them. We urge the Russian Federation not to violate or undermine the essential multilateral disarmament and non-proliferation instruments upon which our collective security depends. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Ireland for her statement and give the floor to the representative of France. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, I in turn would like to express my condolences to the Irish mission and to the family of Jim Kelly, who was an exceptional colleague. So the French mission is alongside you, and we express to you our full friendship. Mr. President, I'd like to thank Ms. Nakamitsu for her briefing. I'll be very brief because everything was already said last week. Moreover, I haven't heard any new information this morning. In any case, no new credible information. Russia is indeed mounting a disinformation campaign. This meeting is based on no established fact. Ukraine has no biological weapons programs. It respects its obligations under the Biological Weapons Convention. The United Nations clearly indicated last week and again this morning that it has no knowledge of the existence of such programmes. On the contrary, Russia has repeatedly resorted to chemical weapons over the last few years. It has supported the Syrian regime. It itself it has used these weapons in the United Kingdom and on its own territory in targeted assassination attempts. By inventing an alternative reality, it is seeking to obscure its responsibility and conceal its own crimes. France is extremely concerned by the possibility that this disinformation campaign might be the prelude to the use of a chemical or biological weapon in Ukraine. If such attacks were to occur, there would only be one perpetrator, that would be Russia. The use of these weapons banned under international law would constitute an intolerable escalation of this conflict. The Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs, Jean-Yves Le Drian, has unambiguously stated such attacks would lead to even more massive economic sanctions in response. Finally, I regret the fact that the Security Council is being used by one of its permanent members as a propaganda platform. I thank the representative of France for his statement and give the floor to the representative of the UK. Thank you, Mr. President. And may I join others in expressing our deep condolences to the Irish mission and to the family of Jim Kelly. He was an exceptional and very well-loved colleague and we will miss him. Thank you. I also uh, thank Ms. Nakamitsu for her briefing today. Mr. President, only yesterday, this council discussed Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We heard from UN briefers the devastating impacts on Ukraine, its people and its cities, on the region to which three million refugees have fled, and on the wider international community, facing higher economic prices and the consequences for countries in need of this council's attention. Today, however, we've had a rehash of amateurish disinformation 
which we discussed and debunked last Friday. It was nonsense then, and it is nonsense now. As I said then, laboratories in Ukraine carrying out research on public health hazards are not a threat to public, to international peace and security. By contrast, President Putin's illegal and inhumane invasion of Ukraine is the most significant threat to international peace and security we face today. So today's charade is really not worthy of a permanent member of the UN Security Council. The only thing this council needs to hear from the Russian Federation we didn't hear it yesterday, we haven't heard it today. The only thing this council needs to hear is that Russia's troops are leaving Ukraine. Ukraine does not want war. Russians and Ukrainians, soldiers, civilians, mothers, children are dying. Russia is isolated diplomatically, isolated economically, and bogged down in Ukraine. So we urge Russia to stop this invasion now before any more damage is done in Ukraine and also to Russia. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the UK for her statement and give the floor to the representative of Ghana. Thank you, Mr. President. My delegation would also like to convey our sincere condolences to the family and the Irish mission on the sad passing away of Ambassador Jim Kelly. Mr. President, my delegation is grateful to the High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, Ms. Izumi Nakamitsu, for her briefing to the Council. We have taken note of the information provided to the Council. Once again, we reaffirm our belief that a conclusive determination of Ukraine's biological program can only be made after due assessment by the relevant internationally accredited bodies. As we previously stated, the weaponization of chemical or biological agents in the war in Ukraine or anywhere else would be unconscionable and should not be contemplated by any party. The international community must forge consensus towards the establishment of a verification regime for the Biological Weapons Convention in view of the recent global developments, including the COVID-19 pandemic. We maintain that the possession or proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, including chemical and biological weapons, neither assures international peace nor national security. We must work collectively to ensure the elimination of all such weapons. What is present, Mr. President, is the need for the cessation of hostilities and the unconditional and immediate withdrawal of the Russian Federation of all its invading troops from the internationally recognized borders of Ukraine. Increasingly, this conflict is having ramifications beyond the borders of Ukraine. The consequent price hikes in food and gas, and gas are impacting in a negative way the already fragile global economy, which is yet to recover from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. By this unjustified war, the lives of many across the world have been put in peril. We therefore welcome the Secretary General's intention to mobilize global action to mitigate the impact of the war and support all efforts to enhance international solidarity. We bemoan the rapidly deteriorating humanitarian situation and call on the warring parties to respect and comply with their commitments and obligations under international law international humanitarian law and human rights laws. Civilians must be protected from harm. Civilian infrastructure must not be the target of military bombardments. Safe passage must be provided for the people who are fleeing to safety. We call for an immediate end to the attacks on medical and other critical facilities and also call for the protection of humanitarian and medical personnel. Mr. President, we encourage the sustenance of the ongoing talks between the negotiators of the two sides and hope that they will yield an early breakthrough for the peaceful settlement of this conflict. I thank you for your kind attention. 
I thank the representative of Ghana for her statement and give the floor to the representative of Brazil. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, let me begin, as others, in conveying to our friends at the Mission of Ireland our very, very deep condolences for the uh, premature loss of Ambassador Jim, Jim Kelly. Um, I would kindly ask the delegation to convey to Ambassador Geraldine, to all the mission, and to the family of Jim Kelly, our deep, deep condolences. Let me also uh, take this opportunity to thank High Representative Nakamitsu for her briefing. Uh, and before beginning, Mr. President, let me kindly request uh, other members of the Council to kindly refrain from attempting to interpret Brazil's position on any issue. Brazil is perfectly capable of presenting its own views uh, in this and in other bodies of the United Nations. Mr. President, 50 years ago, we adopted the Biological Weapons Convention, determined for the sake of humanity to exclude completely the possibility of biological agents and toxins being used as weapons. We took that important step, and I quote the convention, convinced that such use would be repugnant to the conscience of humankind and that no effort should be spared to minimize this risk, end quote. Today, for the second time in a week, we gather here to once again discuss extremely serious allegations regarding the development, production, and stockpiling of such abhorrent weapons. As we stated last Friday, Brazil believes that accusations of such gravity must be thoroughly substantiated by solid evidence, which must be presented to and confirmed by an independent and impartial authority, as foreseen in Article 6 of the Biological Weapons Convention. Brazil has long favored the negotiation of a multilateral verification protocol as a complement to the Convention, with additional measures to guarantee protection and security against emerging biological threats. The situation before the Council today only reinforces the urgency and the necessity to establish such a mechanism. Mr. President, Brazil looks forward to the convening of the Biological Weapon Convention's ninth review conference. We need to restart negotiations on strengthening the regime, including by establishing a verification protocol. This will also be an opportunity to deepen discussions on biosafety and biosecurity. Brazil is of the view that legitimate scientific and technological research should be kept distinct and separate from possible violations of the prohibition against the development and production of biological weapons if we wish to preserve the Biological Weapons Convention regime. Research into new and dangerous pathogens should be subject to strict transparency mechanisms. Finally, I would like to reiterate what we said last week. Brazil condemns in the strongest possible terms the use or threat of use of all weapons of mass destruction, including biological and chemical weapons, anywhere, by anyone, under any circumstances. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Brazil for his statement and give the floor to the representative of Kenya. Thank you, Mr. President. We join others in expressing our deepest condolences to the mission of Ireland and the family of Ambassador Jim Kelly over his shocking demise. I thank Ms. Uh, Izumi Nakamitsu, Under Secretary General and High Representative of Disarmament Affairs for her briefing. Mr. President, it is it regrettable that the armed conflict in Ukraine rages on at an intolerable cost to the people of Ukraine and increasingly to the entire world, especially the global south as prices of essential commodities rise sharply because of shortages and the impacts of sanctions. We are gravely concerned by the sustained targeting of civilians and objects indispensable to the survival of the civilian population, including residential homes, health facilities, shelters, as well as power and water infrastructure in violation of international law and international humanitarian law. 
At this point, Mr. President, this council should be focused on getting a cessation of the military campaign in Ukraine. We appeal to the concerned to do so immediately to allow humanitarian action and facilitate a much needed dialogue towards a sustainable political solution. Any allegation of the development of biological weapons in contravention of the Convention on the Prohibition of the Development, Production and Stockpiling of Biological Weapons must not be taken lightly. We call on all state parties to the Convention to make use of the established mechanisms so that any concern or suspicion of the presence of these extremely dangerous weapons can be verified. In situations of armed conflict, we must point out that such verifications demand a cessation of the conflict for it to be carried out. We urge state parties to the Convention on the Prohibition of the Development, Production and Stockpiling of Biological Weapons to seize the opportunity of the Ninth Review Conference later this year to strengthen the biological weapons regime. In closing, Mr. President, Kenya reaffirms its recognition of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. I thank you. I thank the representative of Kenya for her statement and give the floor to the representative of Norway. Thank you, President. Let me also express our deepest condolences to the Irish mission for the very sad passing of our dear colleague, Jim Kelly. At the outset, thanks to the High Representative Nakamitsu for your briefing. We were called here today at the request of the Russian delegation to again discuss claims of a bio biological weapons program in Ukraine. Yet, we heard from the High Representative last week, and it was repeated today, and I quote, the United Nations is not aware of any biological weapon programs in Ukraine. Russia has failed to offer any credible evidence for its claims, providing us instead with unsubstantiated information, allegation, and interpretations. We have trouble understanding the rationale behind the last minute's call to have further discussions today. We find it unacceptable that Russia continues to repeat its unsupported claims that Ukraine is preparing to use biological weapons. It is becoming quite clear that this is just another smokescreen tactic to draw attention away from Russia's role as aggressor in this illegal invasion of Ukraine. President, Norway remains a firm supporter of the Bio Biological Weapons Convention and we are determined, together with parameters in the international community, together with partners in the national community, to uphold a total ban against biological weapons. Norway con condemns any use of such weapons. They cannot and must not be used under any circumstances. This would constitute a clear violation of international law. We deeply regret that Russia, by calling these meetings, seeks to undermine this council and its vital role to peace diplomacy. Exactly eight years ago, we were shocked by the Russian illegal annexation of Crimea. And now, Russia is waging an unlawful war against another UN member state with devastating humanitarian consequences. The sole responsibility for the war falls on Russia. Russia must end it now. Thank you. I thank the representative of Norway for her statement and give the floor to the representative of Gabon. Merci, Monsieur. President. Thank you, Mr. President. President, we would like to begin by expressing our condolences to the Irish mission. I'd like to thank Ms. Nikamitsu for her briefing. In the absence of new facts since our last meeting, since last Friday on the same matter, allow me to recall the main tenets of the statement of my country in the light of the grave situation that is raising the risk of the incursion of chemical weapons in the crisis in Ukraine. My country calls for parties to abide by the provisions of the Biological Weapons Convention, which formally prohibits the use of broad-spectrum weapons as well as their development, production and stockpiling. 
my country as a member state to the United Nations Convention on the Prohibition of Biological Weapons reaffirms its commitment to eradicating the use of biological weapons and calls on the belligerents to respect international law in this regard. Gabon reiterates its commitment to the peaceful settlements of disputes between United members, Nations member states and we continue to call on parties to de-escalation and to invest in ongoing negotiations in good faith in order to bring an end to this war of which the consequences are already visible beyond Ukrainian territory. Thank you. I thank the representative of Gabon for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of India. Thank you, Mr. President. Our uh, deepest condolences are to the family of Ambassador Jim Kelly and members of uh, the Irish mission. I thank uh, USG Nakamitsu for our briefing. We have carefully noted uh, the points made by USG regarding biological activities relating to Ukraine. India attaches high importance to the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention as a key global and non-discriminatory disarmament convention prohibiting an entire category of weapons of mass destruction. It is important to ensure full and effective implementation of the BTWC in letter and spirit. We also believe that any matter relating to obligations under the convention should be addressed as per the provisions of the convention and through consultations and cooperation between the parties concerned. As outlined yesterday, India remains deeply concerned at the progressively deteriorating situation in Ukraine. We welcome the latest round of diplomatic talks between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. We believe that immediate cessation of hostilities and diligently pursuing the path of dialogue and diplomacy is the only way forward. It is important to undertake this engagement, keeping in mind the need to respect the principles of the UN Charter, international law, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of states. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of India for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of China. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, on behalf of all the colleagues of the Chinese mission, I wish to express our deep sadness at the passing of a DPR of Ireland, Ambassador Jim Kelly, and extend our sincere condolences to his family and the colleagues of the Irish mission. China has stated its position on the Ukraine issue many times. Under the current situation, it is the shared desire of the international community to achieve a ceasefire as soon as possible to avoid more civilian casualties and prevent a massive humanitarian crisis, which is also what China is hoping for. Direct negotiations between the parties concerned are the fundamental way to solve the problem. Russia and Ukraine have held four rounds of negotiations and also they are staying in touch with each other. With negotiations continuing, there is hope for a ceasefire and a peaceful future. China will continue to facilitate dialogue for peace. We support the United Nations and all parties in ramping up mediation efforts and hope that all parties can do more things that are conducive to promoting peace talks rather than adding fuel to the fire. Behind the Ukraine crisis is the issue of European security. It is our hope that the United States and the European Union and NATO can sit down with Russia for an in-depth and a comprehensive dialogue and explore ways to put in place a balanced, effective, and sustainable European security architecture based on the principle of indivisible security so as to achieve lasting peace and stability in Europe. China's position on weapons of mass destruction and biological security is consistent and clear. China stands for the complete prohibition and thorough destruction of all weapons of mass destruction, including biological and chemical weapons. 
China resolutely opposes the development, possession, or use of biological and chemical weapons by any country under any circumstances, and urges countries that haven't done so to destroy their chemical weapons stockpiles as soon as possible. Complying with the Biological Weapons Convention is the obligation of all state parties. We call for early negotiations on the establishment of a BWC verification regime, which will help improve the global biosecurity. China was once a victim of chemical and biological weapons. China believes that any information and lead on biological military activities should trigger heightened concern and attention of the international community to avoid irreparable harm. In this regard, relevant parties should take a responsible approach. Russia has further revealed the newly discovered relevant documents. The party concerned should respond to questions and offer timely and comprehensive clarifications to remove the doubts of the international community. We do not consider it too much to ask, and on this issue, no double standards should be applied. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of China for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of Mexico. Señora thank you, Mr. President. Allow me to begin by joining those, uh, those colleagues of ours in expressing our most sincere condolences to the Irish delegation for such an irreparable loss. We're grateful for the briefing by High Representative Anaka Mitsu, and we take note of the information that she has shared with us particularly her reconfirmation that the UN has no knowledge of biological weapons programs in Ukraine. As we mentioned at a previous meeting, Mexico believes that the Convention on the Prohibition of the Development, Production and Stockpiling of Bacteriological and Toxin Weapons is the fundamental instrument of the multilateral disarmament regime to address these matters. The Convention contains mechanisms for the resolution of disputes through consultations and cooperation. These should be used where any state party deems it necessary. If there are so many doubts or new information, as has been suggested, why don't you proceed along the terms of the Convention? The Council can't be held hostage to contradictory signs. One day, one matter is raised. The next day, something's postponed. The next day, it's substituted for something else. Mexico will continue to be open to dialogue and to constructive negotiation. However, to move forward, there should be reciprocity on this effective commitment to dialogue. Less than 24 hours have passed since the last Council meeting on Ukraine, and the humanitarian needs continue to grow. What is urgent is a cessation of hostilities to ensure the unhindered supply of humanitarian aid to whomever might need it without restrictions or exclusions. Thank you very much, President. I thank the representative of Mexico for his statement. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as the representative of the United Arab Emirates. At the outset, we express our deepest condolences to the mission of Ireland over the passing of DPR, Mr. Jim Kelly. We express our condolences to his family. I thank Ms. Izumi Nakamitsu for her briefing. The use of biological weapons 
or any type of weapons of mass destruction by any party under any circumstances is unjustified, cannot be justified. It is an attack on humanity as a whole. The use of these prohibited weapons requires an international response. Those who are responsible for the use of these weapons must be held accountable as they constitute a violation of international law. The prohibition of these weapons, including through the Convention on the Prohibition of Biological Weapons, is one of the most important achievements of the international community. Thus, maintaining the consensus based upon which this prohibition was established is part of our responsibility to maintain international peace and security. In conclusion, UAE renews its call to use all diplomatic tools to alleviate the suffering of civilians and to stop hostilities. This would in turn allow for reaching a peaceful settlement of this conflict according to international law and international humanitarian law. I resume my function as President of the Council. The representative of the Russian Federation asks for the floor to make an additional statement. I give him the floor. Thank you very much, President. Propaganda, disinformation, amateurism, is unbased imagination, Opera false flag operations, that's what we've heard today. Some statements are practically, literally repeated uh, their statements from the 11th of March. If you haven't heard anything new in our statement today, it's because you weren't listening to us. We provided not fiction, uh, we've not something found in the dark web, but we provided new material and documents which we disseminated. These documents have signatures. These documents were prepared on the basis of cooperation between the U Ukraine and the US in the biological field. And if you can verify what we provide, then I'd ask you to look, but I think that anyone who needs to be able to find this. If you want to do so, then do so. But don't make unfounded accusations of Russian propaganda, but reply to the questions that we asked. You're refusing to do so, simply because you've got nothing to say. Rather than this, you're trying to accuse us of the intention to uh, deploy biological and chemical weapons against Ukraine. This is real cynicism, isn't it? We've already warned about the fact that we know and we officially warned that we do know and we do have information about Rush, uh, Ukrainian nationalists using chemical agents in some regions to carry out a provocation and then accuse Russia of having done it. This is a false flag operation. I say that we didn't listen to us properly, particularly the US. We didn't say, as the representative of the US claimed, that Ukraine, Ukraine itself, has a military biological program. This program, we said, based on the documents that we have, is something that the US itself has, not Ukraine. And Ukraine, in this case, is being kept in the dark. And we already provided you with facts, talked you through them, about the spike in Ukraine 
of dangerous lethal diseases, which there's no explanation for them through with no usual factors. They can't explain that. It could be linked to this kind of activity, though. Today, again, we heard the argument that that the biggest argument of proof that in Ukraine there are no biological activities being taken place is the view, and the, the main, this was the UN Secretariat view, but already said that the UN can't know about this. Secret military biological programs and those who carry them out are not shared with the UN or with anybody else. And as already said, and I said before, we put this item on the agenda. New facts have appeared and we will keep the Security Council abreast, as well as the international community, um, about these facts, which will uh, be, I'm sure, and re revealed in the near future. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned.